All right, so here's my Evolve Shift XT build that you guys saw me do uh, a while ago. And I wanted to give you some long-term reports regarding temperatures and such, and then see if we can do some things to improve it. So one of the things about small form factors that's always difficult is managing heat. And there's also some comments I want to address in the previous video about why I didn't do certain things, because I think people glossed over it and didn't actually pay attention to things I was saying. But that doesn't surprise me. That's kind of the norm these days. The K70 RGB Pro retains the iconic elements of the award-winning K70 RGB keyboard with a durable aluminum frame, genuine Cherry MX mechanical key switches, and per-key RGB backlighting while setting a new bar for performance with Corsair's Axon technology. Powered by Corsair Axon hyper-processing technology, the K70 RGB Pro processes and transmits your inputs up to eight times faster than conventional gaming keyboards with 8,000 Hz hyper-polling and 4,000 Hz key scanning and up to 20 layers of hardware RGB lighting. To see the complete list of features and updates found in the Corsair K70 RGB Pro keyboard, head to the sponsored link in the description below. So first and foremost, if you haven't seen the build and know about the parts that are in here, it's a 12900K, it's a 3080 Ti Founders Edition, small form factor, um, ITX motherboard, SFF power supply, 750 watt, et cetera, et cetera. If you wanna see the details, go and watch the build video. But anyway, we've got Rocket League going right here for a couple of reasons. This is a game that we play in the office quite a bit when we're just got some downtime and we wanna play a few matches and screw around. And I noticed that in this game specifically, that my temperatures on the GPU will get pretty warm, even with a uh, custom fan curve. And I've got a few reasons why I feel like that may be. And I've got Rocket League going right here just with a bot match, which actually puts a little bit more um, stress on the CPU because it's gotta control the bots. Where when you're playing in a normal online match, all it has to do is the calculations of the physics that's being sent from the server to draw what the server's saying is happening on the screen, whereas here the CPU has to also control the bots. So it's actually a little more stressful than a real, um, like a real game would be. But you can see by looking at the screen, the GPU is currently at 80C. CPU is hovering in the upper 60s to low 70s, even with low usage. But the reason for the high temps, it's the 460 to 520 FPS we get. <laughs> so that's obviously a lot of stress on the GPU. The high FPS obviously um, helps in games like this where reaction and latency is very important. So that's why you typically uncap it. If I were to turn on vertical sync right now, I would drop down to 165 frames per second on this panel, because it's 165 hertz panel. Um, but I also play in 4K in the office at 120 hertz. So this is 1440p right now. So you can see ADC at 1440p at this frame rate, 4K at 120, plus unlimited capped FPS. You can see why it would be even more stressful in that room. The other thing too is I'll hit about 81 to 83C in there versus out here. Ambient temp out in this warehouse is a solid five or five or six degrees colder than what's inside the, the room with all of our computers and server and all that stuff. So ambient temp increase also makes the system hotter by an equal amount. So if it's five degrees um, Fahrenheit or a few degrees Celsius hotter in there, the system will be that much hotter than out here by that much. So there's a couple of things I wanna talk about here. Um, this is the, I'm gonna leave the fan curve where it's at um, this is the temperatures that we're seeing right here with this particular match going. I'm gonna show you a couple of things we're gonna try here today. With the case, we were sent these T30 fans. And I did not use the T30 fans initially because they are extremely utilitarian. They don't have any RGB lighting and such. And I put these um, Be Quiet fans in here because I wanted the lighting. So if you look on the side, you can see the lighting of the fans. Realistically though, not much of that light makes it very visible. I mean, look at these fans. They are probably, they look like faded plastic, but this is just because of the kind of material that they use. So it's a very interesting color. Like they're like a silvery black. It's really interesting. Um, but these fans are 30 millimeters thick. And that means that they're able to get 25% more blade surface, which equals more airflow. Another thing that these T30s are known for is the fact that the blade is only a half a millimeter away from the frame. So if you see where the blade has to move around the frame, a lot of standard fans have a fairly decent uh, gap there. And that's where air splash uh, can happen, which means that the air that should be pushing down through resistance is just being forced out of those gaps back to the side at which it came in from, which creates a lower static pressure. This is also a six pole motor instead of a four which means that it's gonna have uh, a lot more, well, there's a lot of benefits to why you'd want more poles in the motor, but it's also a maglev bearing. So all of these things are gonna make a fairly silent fan, 
One of the things that also makes it silent, which you can't actually see on the outside here, is the fact that it has dual balancing rings built into the hub. I know this sounds like an ad, it's not. I'm just telling you the specs of the fans and why I'm willing to give these a shot, even though they are, in my opinion, pretty ugly. Like, I wish that they were just solid black and had LED lighting, but this is a thousand percent. If you want the best performance that you can get through resistance, which this case is, this is what they came up with. But it has dual balancing rings which um, if you guys aren't aware of how balancing rings work, they tend to have a fluid in them that as they're spinning, that fluid will equally disperse itself based on centrifugal force. And so what'll happen is they will balance themselves automatically. It's very similar to how a harmonic balancer works in a car or an engine. But by having two of them allows it to be extra precise. One is on the inner side of the hub and one is on the outer side. So it gives you very specific balancing, uh, a very, well, I should say very accurate balancing for these fans. What's funny is if I, if I just spin it by hand like that, the amount of air I feel it pushing already is kind of intense. Um, the nice thing about this too is the fact that it is daisy chainable, so you can see it's got very similar spec in terms of cables to what comes with the AIO that's already on here. So this means it'll be a lot nicer in terms of being tidy. Rubber standoffs to make them even more silent. They do come with their own screws, and the reason for that is because it's a 30 millimeter fan instead of a 25, the longer screws are necessary. A standard radiator fan screw would not work on here. But check this out. If you look on the hub closely, maybe we'll get a close-up shot, you see we have advanced performance and hybrid mode. Those are gonna change the behavior of the fans themselves. They're gonna change what the max RPM is. So you've got hybrid mode, which actually goes up to, I believe it's about 1500 RPM, uh, but it has a zero RPM mode. So if you were using these as case fans or such, um, and the system is running nice and cool, these could actually go zero RPM, which helps reduce dust, it helps reduce noise, and also extends the life. You have performance mode, uh, which is a max of 2000 RPM, and goes all the way from zero to 2000, or advanced mode, which is 3000 RPM. So if you're one of those people that's like, you know what, and by default they come in performance mode, um, which is the middle switch, is a little toggle switch right here on the hub. So that is how you adjust the, the mode that you're in on the fans. We're going right to advanced mode because then I can adjust it anywhere between the low RPM to the high PR, RPM. This system already gets pretty noisy because of the speed at which I'm having to run the GPU fan to keep it cool. It also comes with a four pin ex extension in case you are not daisy chaining them and you have to run them in different spots to your motherboard you can use the uh, extension wire, plug it down on here and get it to where you need it to go. So we do have two of these, we're gonna be installing them. And it's kind of funny because when I was, and this is cooled down enough now, the GPU's down to 36, I'm gonna go ahead and power off the system. It's interesting because when I was putting this together, if I go ahead and take off the top piece here, I was kind of curious why there was a significant gap above all of this, between the distance at which we get here, let me put this back on so you can see. So there's a gap between the top of the radiator and this upper panel. Remember, we had to install the extension piece so that we could rise it up to fit the AIO. Now I understand why there's that bigger gap. I thought that was just so that there's an extra cushion of area for air to make its way out, um, so the radiator isn't pushed right against the top. No, that's to account for the thicker 30 millimeter fans that um, they provided for this. Now these fans were developed with this particular case in mind, but there's gonna be a trade-off. There is absolutely going to be a noise to performance trade-off. All of the designs of uh, features of this fan though are intended to be as silent as possible while being as high performance as possible. And I guess we will be the judge of that right now. So to do this, I've gotta take off these two screws back here, flip it up, and it's actually pretty easy to replace the fans in this. Nothing has to take place down inside. Since I was smart and I actually have my extension wire right here, this is what hooks up to the motherboard. I have this extension. So I can unplug and try different fans in here, which I intended to do. And I can do all this without having to go down deep inside the system. However, I will be going deep down inside the system because there's one other thing I wanna do. I wanna flip my power supply around. This could be good, this could be bad. And the reason why I say that, if you look here, the fans for the power supply is currently pulling in cool air from this side of the case and then downdrafting it out the bottom. Remember, 30 series has a fan here that pulls air through here, pushes it through that perforation that's in this wall, 
has to work its way through all these cables that are crammed back here and then just hits a just a blocked off you know uh, spot in the case because of the power supply i want to flip this fan around or this power supply around and i want to see if that fan pulling air through will help that air make its way through the cooler i suspect this fan is extremely inefficient at the moment because of the amount of resistance on the other side so i want to see if that will help at all either so i'll be doing both of those changes at the same time which according to the scientific method tells me that I'm going to have less data that's accurate because now I'm not gonna know if it was the flipping of the power supply or the changing of the fans that helped any of that situation. Fine, maybe I'll leave the power supply the way it is, just do the fans first. That way we can at least definitively say what the effect of the fans were on the system. Otherwise, at that point, it's just Jay doing multiple things and can't tell you exactly what did what, which is just the norm around here. So another thing too, I really wanted to try and get one of those custom coolers or custom cards in here. One of the things that um, a lot of people mentioned to me is like, Jay, they make 90 degree PCB adapter thingies that you could put on there. That's fine and dandy, but I showed you how the tubes are still hitting the graphics card, which allows me to not get my lid closed because the tubes are hitting the graphics card, which are coming up flush with this. Look, you can see it perfectly from this angle. When I close this lid, Where's the tubes go? They go down into that spot. So there is just a very, it's very difficult to get those tubes to clear. So I don't think there's a card that I can put in there necessarily that'll work. I mean, I thought the tough might work. How am I tripping over my cord? I thought that the tough might work, but I have to do my test now with this card because this is our A testing. Now we do our B testing. But that's something I'll look into in the future, I guess. So I've got the T30 fans installed. The only downside is, is because of the rubber standoff, there's actually quite the gap. Um, look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of this gaffer's tape and I'm gonna actually seal up the edge around the radiator because I want every bit of air as possible now going through the radiator and not making its way around these edges right here. So this is the only thing I'm changing that would be, I guess, out of, you know, not out of the box type of spec. I haven't touched any of the fan curves or anything. They're still set up exactly for what they were with the Be Quiet fans. So I just wanna hear what the initial startup sounds like, because they will ramp up and then come back down. But I do have a fan curve set in the BIOS based off CPU uh, PWM load. But I've also come to the, to the realization that, you know, small form factor cases are always going to be noisy, but the amount of air coming out of this though, already, holy cow. It's not the quietest thing in the world, but I'm okay with that because that is what I signed up for by using this case. All right, so 76C is where we're at right now. Um, it ends up coming back down to 75 because what tends to happen is as the GPU gets slightly warmer, the CPU gets slightly warmer, which triggers the fan to speed up a little bit, which brings everything back down. Um, ton of air. It's not the quietest thing. It's definitely louder than the um, Be Quiet fans were at 100%, but then again, this is at like 70% here right now. Remember my fan curve, I don't have it going to 100% until the CPU hits 90. So there's a lot of cooling left in this. I could still ramp up the fan curve on the GPU and I could still ramp up the fans that are on the case. And I do plan on doing that, but it's obvious right now that these fans are moving a ton more air than uh, the 25 millimeter be quiets were. The blade design is clearly working through stat all that static pressure. Because remember, it, these fans are having to pull air in through all the cracks and crevices, through the vents, through all the crap inside the case, through the radiator, and then out these perforations on the top. So there's a lot of static pressure that's needed to overcome all of this. But we lost four to five C just by changing out the fans. Now I did choose to go obviously with the um, the performance, which, or the advance, which will allow me to go all the way up to 3000 RPM, that's not where we are right now. So what I wanna do right now is I'm going to tab out here real quick. Look, my, my GPU is at 74%. I've had that go as high as 90% to try and keep itself cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that now because I'm really kind of curious. The nice thing is now because the case fans are actually a little louder, again, this is not for those that are super picky about noise, this will allow me to keep things nice and cool um, and the fan is now just starting to be audible over the temperature of the case fans that are in here. Uh, I actually prefer the case fans noise versus the GPU fan. It's a lower, less it, intrusive high pitch noise that you're finding with the GPU. Yeah. 
But look at the temp right now, 68C, <laughs> by just turning the fan profile up a little bit. So I could even do some more tuning on the fan on the GPU, there's 69. There's nice to get it to be even more uh, silent. But what, what I wanna point out is if you compare the before to after, we are in the 500 to 600 FPS range consistently because our core clock is higher because our temp is lower. So we actually picked up like 70 to 100 FPS in this game. Now the, I chose Rocket League once again because this is the most um, GPU demanding game in terms of max FPS. And the FPS running away to five, 600 FPS like it is puts a lot of stress on the GPU. I mean, look, right, 99% usage the entire time. And we just hit 70, which is already now 6C lower than we were. You said you heard coil wine, which you've never heard before. Yeah, I actually heard coil wine when we first started this because it was, the fans were low enough to where I could actually hear the coil wine. There's a little bit of coil wine in this card uh, over the fans because the fans were quiet enough which I hadn't heard prior. I didn't even realize this card had coil wine. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up Armory Crate and I'm gonna put the case fans to 100% and I'm gonna see what happens after that. And while I am tabbed out here, the temperature is dropping as you can see, but there's full speed. Those are loud now at full speed. But I mean, if I wanted this to be as cool as possible, Holy crap! So, if you want an idea of just how much air is actually coming out of this chassis, I don't know how else to just try to, how to, I mean, I don't have no big old fancy 55 million bajillion dollar fan tester like some channels do, but uh, all the way up there farther than I can reach. Temperature is currently at 65C, 66C. Here's the funny thing. Um, We've definitely cr passed a point of um, like exponential, what, um, well, I guess a diminishing return of noise versus performance. We're down 4C, there's 3C because it hit 67 for a second. We could definitely spend some time fine tuning this to make it quieter and not nearly as bad in terms of um, like temperatures. But look at that, we even picked up another bin. We're at 1920, well, there's 1890, 1935. We're gonna go ahead, yes. We're gonna flip the power supply around because that's the next thing I wanna know. Like, is that going to help or not? So let me flip that power supply around real quick and we'll do this one more time. So flipping around the PSU did have a positive, positive effect, not positive pressure, enough, but positive effect. We're at 70, 71 Celsius right now with the same case fan curve that I had before. Um, so the fans are not at 100%. The GPU uh, curve is where it was when we started. And so now we've actually come down about four or five more degrees by flipping around the power supply. So we are putting a lot of heat into that power supply. So I've got to hope that, um, that we're not causing too much heat going into it. But that shows us that having the power supply help remove that blow through air from the GPU was actually necessary. So I knew that it was gonna be a good effect by when I undid the power supply and flipped it around, how hot the backside of the power supply was, just how hot from that air hitting it told me that uh, absolutely was this gonna have a, a good effect. I bet you anything though, that this would maybe somewhat help keep the power supply from getting too hot because if all that heat soak was making its way through the case into the components of the power supply then the fan was having to ramp up anyway. So hot air flowing over something is still better than stagnant radiating heat on something. So now we're having better airflow over those components, I think. But yeah, 71 degrees Celsius is where we are right now. And now if I go ahead and tab out of here again and I go into Armory Crate and I put those fans up to 100%, I'm really kind of curious as to uh, just how much we're going to cool down. So it's, it sounds like a little air conditioner or vacuum cleaner now. Yep, we've definitely got our, our fan speed Oh, look at that, I got it all nice and balanced. Woo, that, I mean, I can't even reach as high as the air is going. <laughs> so if that gives you any indicator of how much air is truly coming out of this thing. Yeah, we pulled it down to 40, we pulled it down four degrees while it was under load. Pulling down temps under load is difficult to do. Fine, Phil wants me to max out the cooler now for, redi for maximum ridiculousness. Maximum noise. There's so much noise coming out of this little thing now. 
62 degrees though, and the air coming out of the top is so much like, oh, 63, noticeably cooler than when we first started this video. Oh my God, the sound. <laughs> it sounds like a server box. This noise is not worth the few degrees. I mean, I would, I'm obviously gonna spend time now to, when it's in my desk to tune the acoustics, but um, there you go. So just to follow up, I would like to see if I could potentially get like the tough cooler or tough card or something in here because I think that would be even better. I think it'd be even better for the power supply too, honestly. But anyway, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Just a little follow up on this build. It's, it's FFF. It's uh, FFF. It's FFF. It's FFF. Fall, small form factor. Fall TFF. Fall form, fall form factor. Small small form factor. No, it's it's gonna be noisy. I mean, it doesn't need to be this noisy, but it's gonna be noisy because it's tiny and it's gotta make up for the lack of volume of air by having a high exchange rate. And that's what you get, noise. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one.